Well, we hope you had a great weekend. Good morning. It is Monday, July 11th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Hoffman. And I'm Alyssa Ivinson. Tara is on assignment today. Meteorologist Greg Schaup has the first check of our forecast, and it's not a bad start to the week, really. Yeah, it is. Good. Greg, we do have some breaking news this morning. Firefighters are on the scene of a house fire near Spillman Avenue on Crown Street. Street. Now that's right outside New Haven. That's near a vacant house fire last month. News Channel 15's Chris Darby is on his way right now, so keep watching for live updates throughout the show. A major shakeup for Indiana politics could come this week. Donald Trump is planning a fundraiser in Indianapolis tomorrow with Governor Mike Pence. A rally against demonstrators. Fort Wayne Police Chief Gary Hamilton is speaking out against gun violence happening all across the U.S. He joined a candlelight vigil at Imani Baptist Temple yesterday in honor of two black men killed by police and five officers killed in Dallas last week. Two black candles represented the men shot by police officers in Baton Rouge in Minnesota, and there were five blue candles for the officers killed in the Dallas sniper attack. Hamilton blew the blue candles out. He says no one should be taking justice into their own individual hands. Sometimes. Hamilton sent a letter to Dallas police on Friday. You can read that right now. Just look for this story on Wayne.com. It was hurt. A brush fire outside Los Angeles is no longer threatening homes. The Sage Fire started in the Santa Clarita Valley around noon Saturday and quickly burned more than 1,100 acres. About 2,000 people were forced to leave their homes but were allowed to return that night. Crews have had the fire about 20% contained. It's still burning near Interstate 5, the main connector between Southern California and the San Joaquin Valley. It's, a study was published in the journal Pediatrics. Well, check and double, even triple check your tickets. We're still waiting for the latest Mega Millions winner to come forward. One ticket matches Friday's numbers. It was sold in Cambridge City, Indiana. That's off I-70, about 50 miles east of Indianapolis. The ticket is worth $540 million. The winner can take a one-time lump sum payment of about $380 million before taxes or a 30-year annuity. Fort Wayne's smallest winner wrapped up its ninth season with a new record. Each season, 25 people go through 15 weeks of rigorous diet and exercise. A winner is chosen at the end of the season based on the percentage of weight lost. Of course, it's not just about winning, it's about personal success. This year's runner-up, Matt Wilson, lost 122.2 pounds. That's the most weight loss in the program's history. Good for him. Brock Walter is the winner of season nine. He lost 71.6 pounds, almost 30% of his initial weigh-in. Wow, that is tremendous. Congrats to yeah. all the participants, and good luck going forward. Yeah, it'll be a good day for outside today for a run yeah. or well, hydrate, though. Early. Early today. Early or late. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. Yeah, early today looks pretty good. Alyssa and I don't have a pool, so we're going to crash so much pool today. Right. We're taking <laughs> applications for pool crashing later this afternoon. See you, Greg. <laughs> Time now, 514. Tomorrow will be a big shopping day for one online retailer. And it's... A blast from the past is resurfaced now in an app form. But it's not without controversy. Pokemon... Finding Dory has been outfished by a group of land-based animals. <laughs> The Secret Life of Pets is the new number one at the box office. The animated comedy debuted with more than $103 million in ticket sales. That's the largest opening ever for an original film not based on previous source material. That's entertaining Pat right now, too. He's mesmerized by this video. Legend of Tarzan came in second place while Dory dropped to third. The creator and star of the Broadway smash Hamilton has taken his final bow. Lynn manuel Miranda and two other original cast members are leaving the show. Hamilton won 11 Tony Awards last month and has been praised by politicians and rap stars alike. The 1,300-seat Richard Rogers Theater was completely filled during Saturday's performance. Some patrons sat on the stairs or stood in the back to witness theatrical history. Hamilton will continue with three new stars, plus the Chicago production will open this fall and touring and London productions are also in the works. I think we know what Pat's doing this afternoon. You're I want to see, see Pets pet Without, uh, but what's the, I can't remember the name. The pet movie, Pat, we'll yeah, find it for we'll you. Find it. <laughs> I know, 519. Up next, we have a look at this morning's top news stories. We'll find Greg as well for a look at the forecast. Back to you. Thank you, Tina. Following some breaking news this morning, firefighters on the scene of another vacant house fire this morning. News Channel 15's Chris Darby has been on the scene for just about 10 minutes. Chris, what can you tell us? 
A major shakeup for Indiana politics could come this week. Donald Trump is planning a fundraiser in Indianapolis tomorrow with Governor Mike Pence. A rally in Westfield will follow. Now, as we've been reporting, Pence is considered a leading candidate to be Trump's running mate. If he's selected, Pence would have to drop his reelection campaign by noon on Friday. The Republican State Committee would then pick a replacement to face Democrat John Gregg in November. Put rain here. Folks uh, need a little bit of rain. The grass is getting kind of brown already. Is it bad that it's Monday and we're already looking forward to the next weekend? Not at all. <laughs> and hopefully it's just like last. It was beautiful. It was. Weekend. Thanks, Thank Greg. You. Time now, 546. Up next, the road to Rio has ended for one local athlete. And Taking a look at the stories we're following this morning, firefighters on the scene of a vacant house fire near Spilson Avenue and Crown Street. This is a live look right now. That's right outside New Haven and a street away from another empty home that caught fire last month on Madge Avenue. Chris Darby is there at the scene. He will have the latest in a live report in about nine minutes. Donald Trump is planning a fundraiser in Indianapolis tomorrow with Governor Mike Pence. A rally in Westfield will follow. Pence is still considered a leading candidate to be Trump's running mate. Drivers expect traffic restrictions and shifts on a section of I-69 starting today. Crews are replacing two bridges between mile markers 291 and 295. Northbound bridges will be replaced this season. Southbound will follow next year. And IPFW is getting its first sorority in more than a decade. Alpha Sigma Alpha will open a chapter this fall. That's the news. Now here's Greg with your forecast. Well, we New at noon, a big shakeup in Indiana politics. The Democratic Senate nominee has dropped out of the race and a former senator is expected to join. Allen County prosecutors file a murder charge against a man of an, in the death of a woman in April. We have new details. And the clouds have moved out, sunshine and warmer temperatures moving in. We'll tell you what's ahead this week. Plus, investigators looking into what caused yet another vacant house fire. Your number one news at noon starts now. You're watching coverage you can count on. This is News Channel 15's News at Noon. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Alyssa Ivinson and for Pat and Tara. We're following a developing story right now in our newsroom. The Indiana Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate just dropped out of the race. Baron Hill made the announcement this morning. Hill says he made the decision after talking with his family, staff and party leaders. Hill still believes the Democrats have a chance of winning the Senate seat. The Republican nominee is Todd Young, who beat out Congressman Marlon Stutzman in the primary. The current senator, Dan Coats, decided not to run for re-election. Now, CNN is reporting Evan Bayh will be returning to the political spotlight to run for that open Senate seat. Bayh announced in 2014 that he was not planning on running this year. In 2010, he decided not to seek a third term in the Senate. Bayh is expected to make a formal announcement today. Another possible political shakeup in Indiana. Governor Mike Pence expected to attend an event with Donald Trump tomorrow. Trump's stop in Indianapolis is just days before the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. The Washington Post says there's a 95 percent chance Pence could be named Trump's vice presidential pick. But this weekend, the governor kept the speculation alive. We've been providing them with uh, information uh, as requested. I've come to no conclusion about what decision we would make. If Pence joins the presidential race, he would have to drop out of his re-election campaign by noon on Friday. The Republican State Committee would then pick a replacement to face Democrat John Gregg in November. Hillary Clinton's campaign says Bernie Sanders will join her at an event tomorrow where he plans to endorse her. People Clinton even will be in New Hampshire Donald where Sanders paid. defeated her by a wide margin in the first primary. Sanders pushed for policy agreements on high education, health care and minimum wage. Some policies were included in a draft of the party's platform in Orlando over the weekend. Sanders has not said yet that he will endorse Clinton. New at noon, a man is now facing a murder charge in the death of a woman back in April. Charges filed Friday against Scott Jordan. Police believe he strangled 52-year-old Jacqueline Van Dunn. Court documents say her body was found in a plastic bag, her legs tied together, her mouth taped shut. Officials also found frozen bottles of water there to try to prevent decomposition. Police received a letter that Jordan sent to a relative that said he, quote, got so mad he killed her. Jordan's first appearance in court is tomorrow. 
Officials are closely investigating today yet another vacant house fire near New Haven. This the latest in a string of vacant house fires in that area. Firefighters were called just before five to Spilson Avenue and Crown Street. When they arrived, flames shooting out of the home. Take a look at that video. You can see it there. This is just one block from where two other fires happened on Madge Avenue. It's also near more than a dozen other fires in the Blackhawk area. Those fires are still under investigation. Officials have not said yet that they are all connected. Three people were seriously hurt in a crash on West Jefferson Boulevard and Getz Road this morning. Police say two landscaping trucks were heading west on Jefferson and a red SUV was going east on Jefferson. The SUV then turned left onto Getz, causing the two trucks to swerve. They ended up hitting each other. The trucks did miss the SUV, but another SUV hit it, pushing it over. A woman and child were pinned inside that red SUV there. They were taken to a hospital in serious condition. The other SUV driver was also seriously hurt. The landscaping truck drivers were not hurt. A police sting at a Warsaw massage parlor landed two women in jail. Lillian Chu and Yili Lau are facing corrupt business, prostitution, and evasion of tax charges. Police served a search warrant at Ying Massage on the east side of Warsaw after a month-long investigation. Investigators say more arrests are possible. This investigation is not over. The IRS, Indiana State Police, and the Fort Wayne Police Department are, are, are all helping in that investigation. It's certainly already hot and humid out there, but there is some rain in the forecast, but not today, right, Greg? Yeah, and it's really not going to cool us down much uh, over the next couple of days. That he All right, thank you, Greg. Part of downtown Dallas still closed today as authorities continue to investigate last week's ambush on police officers. Dallas police say Micah Johnson had plans for a larger attack. Police say he shot and killed five officers Working. and hurt several others. Johnson was killed by a police robot bomb after negotiations failed. He was angry over the recent police shootings of two black men in Minnesota and Louisiana. The Dallas community has come together to show support for the city's officers. Even though they mean for that. A funeral for Michael Smith, one of the five officers killed, is scheduled for Wednesday. President Obama is planning a visit to Dallas tomorrow. He'll meet privately with relatives of the police officers killed. Well George W. and Laura Bush and Vice President Joe Biden will also well, be there. Uh, the president was in Spain over the weekend where he addressed what happened in Dallas. Uh, and his team went up. The president was invited by Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings. Well, protests over the police killings continued over the weekend. Several demonstrators were arrested in multiple cities. Hundreds marched through the heart of Atlanta, chanting and blocking intersections. Many people also arrested in Baton Rouge. Protesters tried to block the entrance ramps to an interstate. March organizers there were trying to prevent people from causing a riot and listen to police. Well, more than 100 people attended a silent protest last night on the Allen County Courthouse Green. Some stood in silence with duct tape across their mouths. Organizers say they're standing against gun violence, police shootings, and racial profiling. They hope to inspire the community to unite against justice, injustice. Fort Wayne Police Chief Gary Hamilton is speaking out against the gun violence that is happening across the country. Yesterday, he joined a candlelight vigil at Imani Baptist Temple. Two black candles represented the men shot by police officers in Baton Rouge and Minnesota. And there were five blue candles for the officers killed in the Dallas sniper attack. Hamilton blew out the blue candles. He says no one should be taking justice into their own individual hands. I really believe. Hamilton sent a letter to Dallas police on Friday. You can read that right now in this story on Wayne.com. Still to come, a fundraiser for Honor Flight Northeast Indiana. And you'll see bicyclists riding throughout the state in the next week. Find out who they're supporting when we come back. Channel 15's News at Noon. You might see a group of cyclists across the state over the next 13 days. Active and retired police officers and supporters are riding to benefit families of officers who died in the line of duty. The Cops Cycling for Survivors starts today in Indianapolis. The annual trip covers more than a thousand miles. Riders will be coming from Richmond to Bluffton tomorrow and then Bluffton to Angola on Wednesday. They'll make a stop at the Law Enforcement Firefighters Memorial in Fort Wayne Wednesday morning. 
where you can dance the night away and donate funds to help send a veteran to Washington, D.C. Kingston Healthcare is hosting its 20th annual dance event tonight. Half of all the proceeds will go toward Honor Flight Northeast Indiana. Tonight's event is from 7 to 9 at Saruti's Banquet and Event Center. Tickets are $10 in advance online or at Kingston Residence on Winchester Road. You can also buy them for $12 at the door. We'll be ready for some more traffic restrictions on a, a section of I-69 starting today. Crews are replacing two bridges, the one over 8 Mile Creek in Allen County and the one over Flat Creek in Huntington County. Today, workers will start constructing two temporary bridges in the median. Lane restrictions will be between mile markers 291 and 295 in both directions. The northbound bridges will actually be replaced this season. Southbound will follow next year. It's a good day for a convertible out there. Yeah, though. and if you are driving uh, and you don't have the convertible, boy, you hope your air conditioning oh, doesn't yeah. give out on days like today or as we head towards Friday and Saturday. Hey, the, le the weekend's already looking pretty good. It does. Thank you very much, Greg. A Vincennes native went on to be one of the biggest names in vaudeville. Jane Pauley has the life story of Red Skelton in today's Bicentennial Minute. News, news at noon. Sharing your Netflix password could be a federal crime. A California judge upheld the conviction of a man who left his job but still used the password of a coworker. A dissenting judge on the case says the ruling could make millions of Americans who share their Netflix passwords, quote, unwitting federal criminals. Netflix's CEO, by the way, says he doesn't mind when people share passwords because it creates a bigger audience. Well, if you've seen more people walking around lately, it's not just your imagination. They're taking part in a new popular game. This is Pokemon Go. It has people across the country on a scavenger hunt. Gamers download the app on their smartphones and then send them to different locations around the city to catch the Pokemon characters. Many users say it's giving them a chance to get some exercise. Everyone is but police are asking users to be careful while looking at their screens and for parents to accompany kids. Now, News Channel 15's Hannah Strong is taking a look at the trend today. Catch her report tonight at 5 and 6 and on Wayne.com. The creator and star of the hit Broadway show Hamilton got a standing ovation on his last night. Fans lined up around the Richard Rogers Theater in New York to catch the last glimpse of Lin-Manuel Miranda as Alexander Hamilton. Two other actors in lead roles and an ensemble member are also departing the show. Miranda will go on to work on other projects, including Mary Poppins. Greg's up next with the last check of the forecast, but first we have some birthday wishes to send out. Twin brothers Gavin and Garrett Wan turned one year old on Sunday. We hope you guys had a great birthday, Gavin and Garrett. Grayson Thomas celebrated his first birthday yesterday as well. Happy birthday to you, Grayson. Caden Miller turned one year old yesterday. We hope you had a great day, Caden. Love that little smile. And today, Landon Hood celebrating his first birthday. Have a great day, Landon. To get your baby on TV, just send his or her picture to First Birthdays at Wayne TV, 2915 West State Boulevard, or email us at firstbirthdays at wayne.com. As well. The rain will feel a little good, but it's just going to make it sticky too. It is, very much so. All right, thank you so much, Greg. And thank you for watching your number one news at noon. We'll see you tomorrow for first news starting at 5.